Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. I remember when the shitty media men list dropped. For those that don't know, this was back in 2017 at the height of the Me Too movement. And it was this spreadsheet of men working in media who were being anonymously accused of a whole range of sexual misconduct, from just being weird creeps to being full-on assaulters. The list caused a lot of hemming and hawing about feminism, ethics, sex, the workplace, the internet, and on and on and on. A fictionalized version of this list is at the center of Yomi Adagoki's novel appropriately titled The List. And she talked to NPR's Aisha Roscoe about that tension when convictions and strong beliefs run up against complicating questions. Support for NPR and the following message come from LiveWrite, publishers of Emperor of Rome. Historian Mary Beard, named the world's most famous classicist by The Guardian, chronicles the lives of Caesar, Caligula, Nero, and more. Emperor of Rome, available now. This message comes from NPR sponsor Autograph Collection, part of Marriott Bonvoy. Each of the almost 300 independent hotels in the Autograph Collection are designed to be exactly like nothing else. Visit AutographCollection.com to find something unforgettable. In Yomi Adegoke's new novel, The List, Ola has a very tough decision to make. It's only a month before she's meant to marry the love of her life, Michael. But then he shows up on an online list of men in media accused of sexual misconduct. Does she believe him when he says it's not true? Does she dump him? Does she go through with the wedding? And if she does, what does that say about her? Well, you're asking all the right questions, and we can't tell you what happens, but we can, however, talk to the author, Yomi Adegoke, who joins us today from New York. Welcome to the show. Hi, Isha. Thanks for having me. So first, introduce us to the main characters of the book, Ola and Michael. They are this real power couple. Yeah, so Ola and Michael are a Instagram famous couple who kind of seem to have it all on the surface. They're young, they're beautiful. They are what I thought was quite specifically important to sort of elevate is the fact that they're a black, dark-skinned couple, which, especially in the UK, you don't necessarily see much of in terms of the media. And as you mentioned, an anonymous list goes up on social media accusing multiple different men of varying degrees of abuse, and Michael is named. And the list is very much a catalyst that exposes other underlying issues that this so-called couple goals relationship sort of had prior to the allegations being made. And this list, it's like a a whole character of its own. How did you come up with the idea? I mean, there there were some lists of men in media, kind of bad men in media, published in 2017. Like, how much of that inspired the book? It's so interesting you said that you feel like the list is its own character. It really it really is. And I'd say that the internet is very much its own character in the book. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, there were a spate of lists that had gone viral in 2017. And as a journalist and as a feminist, as Ola is, I think my knee-jerk response was kind of like, it was a positive thing. It was important to hold men Account- not just men, but, you know, primarily men, accountable in ways that we hadn't seen before. Um, it was finally giving victims and survivors um, a voice. That being said, um, being a journalist and someone who, you know, grew up on the internet, sort of very aware of stranger danger and the idea that you never know who you are speaking to online, I then, I think, started to have questions just about, you know, the ethics of that format and how easily anonymity can be weaponized online. So yeah, I wanted to write something on it. And yeah, the rest is very much history. There is this moment in the book when Ala finally meets a person who published a list and she's told, whatever you do, choose you. And that line really stuck with me because I felt like that really is the lesson. Absolutely. And I feel like the story of the women is so frequently erased. And I felt someone like Ola, um, Ola's not just connected to a guy that's been accused of something heinous. She also is a feminist. So, you know, the stakes are incredibly high for her. She is risking, you know, looking like a hypocrite. She's risking having her own feminist credentials questioned. And the pressure on her is huge. And I did want to, whatever the outcome was, 
show Ola choosing herself and being able to define herself outside of the man she is with because she's not only defined by her relationship with him she's also defined later on by his purported crimes you talk about them as a black british couple as yes. a dark skinned black british couple right talk to me about the the nuances that that also brought to even the accusations right this is an accusation against a black man right of intimate uh, violence or harassment right what is the the role of that and how does that make this story a bit different than it would have been if this was a white couple in terms of visible dark-skinned black couples in the media, um, we do not have that many. The kind of representations that we get in terms of black love, and I think I can say with confidence it's similar in the States, that when you do see black couples, the likelihood of the woman being also dark-skinned tends to be quite rare. So Mm -hmm. when people do see that, people really tend to root for that couple. Also, on top of that, you have Michael's identity in particular as a black man, which means that there is, you know, sort of perceived or, I suppose, assumed deviance or guilt um, when it comes to allegations such as these, which I think often gets lost in the conversation. Of course, historically, there have been allegations made against black men that have been fueled by racism, but also believed because of racism. And that, I think, complicates the story and the narrative. It's very complicated because two things can be true at once. It can be true that, on the one hand, black men do, you know, have a perceived and assumed guilt. And simultaneously, there are men that have been guilty of what they've been accused of. So, yeah, it's. I think it brings a very different dimension to the conversation compared to whether the protagonists were a different race. And the list is going to be adapted for TV. Congratulations. What are you most excited about, you know, putting it on the screen? I think I'm excited to see the different conversations it will foster. I actually think people deal slightly better, maybe, with problematic, complicated characters on screen. It's slightly easier to empathize with them and get in their heads. Yomi Adegoke's debut novel, The List. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Up First achieves the rare one-two punches of being short and thorough, national and international, fact-based and personable. Every morning, we take the three biggest stories of the day and explain why they matter. And we do it all in less than 15 minutes. So you can start your day a little more in the know than when you went to sleep. Listen now to the Up First podcast from NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Charles Schwab. Schwab has financial consultants ready to serve you, plus professional answers and 24-7 live help. And it's backed by Schwab's satisfaction guarantee. Visit schwab.com slash satisfaction to learn what's included and how it works. This message comes from NPR sponsor Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. OCI is the platform for database, application development, and AI needs. Train your AI models at twice the speed and half the cost. Take a free test drive at oracle.com slash NPR.